even know who you are. Man, Moreau said something. He said, if God opens your eyes to see you, you'll be afraid of you. Pray in the Holy Ghost, everybody. It's a compoco tada. 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 He that is joined with the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. Once you have come into Christ, you have put on Christ. about big people. The Gentiles will come to oh, that light oh, and kings will come to that light. Oh, God can help you on the way. If you have a burning vision in your heart, today you're going to hear words that will set your heart on fire. And after now, you just start running. So we give God praise. We give God great praise for Pretty Girls Prayer Network. <laughs> oh my God. I was just thinking about it. We've done plenty of meetings. You know, I literally forgot we had a crusade in Umuahia. here. And that was Corona year. 2020. Kami! Somebody shout audacious steps. They didn't even, they didn't post, they didn't, I was expecting videos of homecoming 2023 because who was at homecoming last year? Jesus. My God. In fact, I feel like a media, one of these days, you guys will sit down and do a documentary of all the homecomings. Just join it together. Oh my God. The power of God at homecoming 2023. Jesus Christ. But you know, the, the, the interesting thing was we didn't start like this. In 2018, when we started, when I started, because now Lovona come with me. So, <laughs> in 2018, when we started, if you had showed me this picture, it would look like who dash monkey banana. Yes, because who goes you as as how? From where to where? Like when? How? You know? Tell us. With the aid of a simple diagram. But you see something about dreaming is that you're not paying to dream. Dream is free. Andrew Womack said, imagination is the power of creation. Imagine it. Imagine it first. I agree you don't have the money in your account, but imagine it. You need money to imagine. Tonight, let your heart be so enlarged. Odogo, please. Let your heart be so enlarged that you imagine all the big things that God is going to be doing with your life. And we know that in 2024, God has promised us quantum leaps. That's time compression. So whatever it is you have seen, guy, you have not seen nothing. More. Because in 2024, we're experiencing 10 years in one month. One minute we're here and the next minute we're there. <laughs> I see somebody, as I just said this, I see kings taking note of you. That little thing that you do, that nobody is aware of, the spirit of God is coming upon you strongly today. That the grace for visibility is jumping upon you. In the name of Jesus, Kings are running. Kings are running to that woman, to that man. In the name of Jesus. I've told this story over and over again. It was a Valentine's Day. Wednesday. 2018, 14 February. No boo. Nobody to call you babe. So you start fasting and pray. <laughs> and because what you do with the days that look lonely, you start asking God questions. Go back and ask God, what is on your mind for me? I've started preaching you no, know, so you can start writing as well. So you can go back and start asking God, God, what is on your mind? What do you have for me? What are you saying? That's what we do with lonely days. You know, today it dawned on me. I said the worst thing that can happen to an individual is to face an opportunity they're not prepared for. Do you know how painful it is that we give you the platform, but you can't feel it? That means the grace of God has come upon you, but you work so hard that there is no platform that will look like a privilege even though we call it a privilege it is something that you are ready for that when you walk through big doors you look like the door 
Not, oh my God, I can't believe, I can't believe. And then we give you the mic, you don't have anything to say. What do you do in Adulam? Build up energy. What do you do now that nobody, nobody cares about you? Nobody knows your name. That your mother's backyard, that your mother's kitchen, what do you do? Tongues. Rakatos. Kedabaha. Hayabaha. This is the least I will ever be. You look around you, the pictures, they look very limiting. But you know God has said to you that Jerusalem will be like a city without walls. There are no limits, there are no roofs, no boundaries. The only boundary we have is the one we place on ourselves. That's the only boundary we have. And on that Valentine's Day, I was just praying and I was squatting in somebody's house. So while I lay down, and the girls have done the vex for me. You know when they're going to give you a sign that it's time to go, they will go rent your own house. And I just lay down there like, oh my God, no house, no this one, no that one, no boo. Which kind of life? Which kind of life? Oh God, what a life. I say, oh my God, what a life. It was in the process of saying what a life that God said, this one you're talking is rubbish. I have plans for you. He said, Jeremiah, 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 before I formed you, I knew you. Before I knew, I ordained you. You're here crying that I don't have house, you don't have this. I have big plans for you. I have nations for you to take. That means it's possible that what you're crying for is so small that God is not even paying attention to that thing. Because he has set eternity in your heart. Somebody must live here with a big mind. What's in now? <laughs> he is joined with the Lord, is one spirit with the Lord. What can we not do now? Which city can we not take? With this power of the Holy Ghost, can we play in? Look around you. This is the work of the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, the power of the Almighty overshadows you. The first thing that happens to you is you get drunk. You start talking about vision that people look at you and say, cut your coat according to your size. You tell them, I will swallow it and have space. And then while I was there crying, I just saw the picture of pretty girls pray. That is, because stop this cry, you're crying. Go and help the women of this generation. You're crying for nonsense. We have work for you to do. And then, I did not ask God, God, what of microphone? I didn't say, God, what about hall? I didn't say, God, nothing. What you have is enough. God asked Moses, what is in your hand? He said, I have rod. But when you carry rod now, tap it. It's enough. What do you have in your hand? Phone. Phone that before you type, praise the Lord. You turn it, turn it, it will off. You own it. That was what we used to start this great ministry. Is that phone? HTC. That will off at 98%. So it's, it's like TV. That should be on. If you unplug it, it's gone. And then if you see my voice in 2018, it has not reduced though. There are women that God is going. Ah, ah. From where to where you? How? But I had received something. It's called heart enlargement. It is not the size of my phone. It's the size of what is in my heart. That's why Luke 135 will be one of my favorite scriptures. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. That's enough. That's your virgin womb will carry a child. That's all you need. I'm staring your heart and while I'm speaking, let your heart be born because God is showing some of the visions today. Some of you have already seen visions. God is showing you strategies. It's time to move. It's time to move. And then I carried my phone. I just typed on Facebook. Please, if you like to pray, join my WhatsApp group. Back up. Because the anointing, the anointing will speak even with a bad phone. It will speak. It's an anointing. The anointing will bring the money. The anointing will bring the people. It's not money first. It's Holy Ghost first. I told you guys, what you need is not money. What you need is the spirit. Ha, the spirit of God will bring money. The spirit of God. He said, until the spirit you poured upon us from on high, the wilderness will become a fruitful field. And the fruitful field will be counted for a forest. And then the first night, we had about 40 something of these something people. And that night, people were saying, my lump has disappeared. Yeah? Yeah? This one has gone, ah! My father's car was missing. They ah! I was looking at my phone. They were calling me. Sure, we're doing that again. We're going to do it next Friday, right? I said, right. Because all I had in my mind was just this Friday. I didn't know that there was nations coming. I just was obedient. You see, when, you, when you're not obedient, it means you don't know the power of the God that sent you. That's why you're looking at your low self-esteem first. God told Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. Let me send you. Don't be afraid of their faces. And it was from there, from WhatsApp, from WhatsApp. We said, okay, let's have a meeting. But without money, okay, I will bring 1,000. I will bring 500. I will bring that. 
It was a crazy journey. But today, you need to see what is happening in Protocol, Pretty Girls Prayer Network. You need to see what is happening in Abuja. Abuja is even the one that scares me the most. There is an army. Do you understand that? In six years, God has been able to, able to help me to raise pastors that are leading Abuja chapter, leading Uyo chapter, leading Bayasa chapter. I don't need to be present. The same way it's happening here, people are falling and scattering everywhere. And I'm not there. What grace is this? What anointing is it? From whence? How did you get it? It's simple steps of obedience. That small one, God said, call that person, pray for him. That's enough. It might not look like ministry. We started doing ministry without knowing we we're doing ministry. It was two years down the line. We say, ah, now ministry we do so. Oh, we have entered the waters. So those of you who are saying, God has called me, you are writing too many notes. That's your problem. You have too many vision books, no vision steps. You have written so much in your book. Come on, keep that book one side and start moving. Because your book, not the book will not move itself. You have too many visions book. God appeared to me. Jesus appeared to me. Oh, no, some of you have seen Jesus more than me. But we don't even have any proof of what you have seen. How can you say you have seen Jesus and there's no fire? No movement? No city is shaking. You have seen which Jesus did you see? Oh my, if it's Jesus, eh? if it's Jesus that you saw in that vision. Fire. Like fire, fire, fire in your tail. A woman who is on fire is not checking time. If fire starts burning here, you don't have time to check time. Movement. Movement. Let fire fall upon your heart. What you are seeing here is the beginning of beginning of beginning. We never start. The same way I've been talking, I will say it again. I'm used to big talking. I know the shape. It is my, I'm the prophet of big things. I tell myself that. That you, that you seated here, you will come in a few years. Few years is even plenty. You will see stadiums packed full of all kinds of people gathered for the sake of the gospel. That in Port Harcourt, it will be said that anybody that is anybody came to this mountain. This is the mountain where big people are made. So welcome and sit down very well. And come next Friday. And the Friday after the Friday. Fall under the power. Stand up. Fall again. Let them laugh at you. Roll. Let your cloth be stained. It won't be long. It won't be long. This power that I know, it doesn't take time. It speaks immediately. It starts speaking from when it comes upon you. It starts speaking. So it's movement time. Can you just lift up your way? Close your eyes and just speak in tongues for like a second. Shida barada brokoto shida baha. Men kontole de brege de gede de brege de gede de brege de. Shada balaka tops. Ten more seconds, just pray in spirit. Give me Isaiah chapter sixty, verse one to four. Man toko rodo brokoto shida brakata yada baha. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise God forevermore. So before we go deep into the word, uh, my topic today is beacons of hope. Beacons of hope. Beacons of hope. Beacons of hope. Anyone you want to call it. Shai is beacon of hope. And um, while we go deep into the word, I just want to make a quick announcement. I want us, because we've come here, and this place is so big, and it's not like it's so big. It's just bigger than silent times four. So we have work to do. Amen. That means that Everybody who is here, who is not a part of a, a ministry team, like a department, ambience, media, you just join. That means we, have, we need hands doubled. Are you with me? And, and, and um, you should be happy. You should be grateful to be able to serve in God's house. You should, be, you should be delighted about it. So one of the major departments or ministries that I really want people to join is ambience. Ambience are the people who take care of the sanctuary cleaning the sanctuary, making it look nice. I mean, they did a great job. And I want you to please celebrate ambience, please. You're not a wicked person. Clap for them. Amen. This place we are standing now, this stage was paid for by one person. This um, decorations was paid for by one person. Lights. People were just as in, my heart is just full. Like, people were just pumping money. Small, small girls. Hey, God. I wonder when the multi-millions will come. This nation cannot take us. Because the heart is already there. And it's not easy to find people who have hearts to give. So money is not the first thing that people want to give. And it's, it's, it's good. Praise God. So we are calling on people to join different departments, different ministry teams, media, ambience. Join, 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 join. Work will be plenty. And then a very, very last important announcement is we're getting chairs. Look around. We need more chairs, more chairs to fill the back. So we're getting like about 200 more chairs. And as the Lord leads into your heart, you have the money. You pay for it, and that will be the beginning of bigger things for your life. 
Amen. Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 4. Let's read the loud voice. Want to go? Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon the next verse. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. Read along with me. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon the next verse. And the Gentiles shall come to my light, and kings to the brightness of my rising. Last verse. Lift up thy eyes round about and see. All day they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Matthew chapter 5, 13 to 14. 13 to 16. If you have your Bibles, just open it up so that we will be fast enough. And I plan to be closing early. Shout Amen. amen. Only two people shouted Amen. Only two people believe that this anointing can work. Matthew chapter 13. Let's go. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be sorted? It is therefore. Nah, eh. What is going on? Is this how you put project? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. Next verse. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. Next verse. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and he giveth light to all that in the house. Last verse. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and do what? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. Somebody say beacons of hope. Hope is simple. Confident expectation of good. Hope is that I'm expecting that something good is going to happen. And some people live very hopeless lives. So when your phone is ringing, the first thing you say, who are the old money? Or who is coming with bad news now? Your heart is beating. How many of you have had that experience? As your phone rings, your heart beats. Like, oh God, what has happened again? That's a hopeless situation. If somebody with hope is that when your phone rings, the first thing that comes into your mind is, ah, who is that person that wants to give me money? So when your phone beeps from today, the first thing that you're, you're thinking about is, ah, a lot has entered. Because the Bible said in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, hope maketh not ashamed. So when we have this hope, we're not going to be ashamed. So that is hope. But what is a beacon? A beacon is a light that serves as a sign of the presence of something. You know, when you write, you're listening to something twice. So that's why we are, we are admonished to write. I mentioned hope, confident expectation of good. And I said a beacon is a light that serves as a sign of the presence of something. Light that shines and it shows that something is there. For example, prepared meter. How many of you use prepared meters in your houses? When Napa brings light, there's a light that shines, Abby. If you have enough, um, this is to show green. If the money don't they finish, it will show red. Amen. Praise God. That's a beacon. It's a light that shows that something is present. So we've described, we've defined hope. What is hope? Confident expectation of good. Question, what are you hoping for? What is your hope today? Good things? Fresh fire? Only two people have hope. Fresh anointing. Nobody wants to marry. All right. Okay, so hope with your confident expectation that this year your friends will wear a shwebi for you. Amen? Praise God. Okay. So a confident expectation of good and then a beacon is a sign a light that shows that this thing will happen how many of you have seen a light that is showing that people like say that thing will happen anybody saying hello to you any talking stage any green light praise god forevermore now what is a beacon of hope what is a beacon of hope it is something that holds the promise of something good a beacon of hope is something that holds the promise of something good and let me announce to you that you are the beacon of hope to this generation we read Isaiah 60 verse 1 arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you but verse 2 is what people used to avoid for behold you know every time the Bible says behold people avoid the behold and just read the other one behold means take a look observe and see the darkness it didn't say darkness so. the darkness if I say a woman came right and then I say the woman came what's the difference between both specific so this the darkness there means it's a prophesied darkness it's a darkness that we cannot avoid it will come and if you are observant if you are beholding you will observe that the darkness has covered the earth but it moved from the darkness to gross darkness will cover the people what kind of prophet of doom is that one? You know, in the school of the prophets, there are two kinds of prophecies. There are prophecies that are flexible. There are prophecies that are not flexible. Prophecies that are flexible is you have a dream, 
a foretelling showing that somebody is going to die, you can cancel it. You know that many of you would have lost your parents, but now you, now you say, ah, stop. Are, are you, am I speaking to the right house? You saw the death. You were sure. This thing came out like, hey, hey. Come, wait. Yes. Stop it. Come on, shut up. Who are you? Who goes the devil? That's flexible. So somebody can call you and say, oh, I saw you in the coffin. Say, shut it up. Shut is my enemy. We, we bury them. We dance on an empty grave. That's a flexible prophecy. But they're inflexible prophecy. Like rapture. You cannot pray it away. One day we'll fly. Are you flowing with me? There are inflexible prophecies like Antichrist. He's gonna come. He's already in the earth. It's a system of the world that is against the Christ. Like we're looking for, for hall, for venue. And everywhere we went to, they told us, we don't want church. Why don't you want church? What is your problem? Why do you hate Jesus so much? But you're a believer. You don't even understand that that spirit of Antichrist works in different people. So I said that to say that there is, there is darkness, there is the darkness. That one, you can't pray it out. will cover the earth. He didn't end. They said, gross darkness will cover the people. But something else, there's another set of people that is as if it's not affecting them. I like that God prepares you in advance for calamity. There's a message Pastor Chris preached. I don't know if it's a title, but I think the title is Anticipating Evil. That the more you said something, he said, faith believes for the best, but is ready for the worst. That means part of your faith is to be ready for darkness and dark situations. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. There are people who are crying dollar, dollar. There are people who don't know the difference between dollar 2,000 and dollar 500. He said, for behold, the darkness will cover the earth. But there's a shouting point for you. Gross darkness will cover the people, but you, the Lord shall arise upon thee. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. I thought somebody would shout. Why are you so quiet? For behold, the darkness will cover the earth. Gross darkness will cover the people. But you, 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 you. The Lord shall arise upon you. His glory shall be seen upon you. Say these words with me. Great is the glory of God upon my life. You're not saying it loud enough. Great is the glory of God upon my life. Because the thing is, when you come here and you hear this, what people think we're trying to psych you. We're not motivational speakers. I'm not a CRK teacher. We are prophets. And the difference between the motivational speaker and what we say is that Jesus said, the words that I speak are spirit and they are life. So the moment I declare, great is the glory of God upon your life, it became so. One more time, shout it loud. Great is the glory of God upon my life. But it moved up from you shining. Then it took us to Matthew five like we read he said guys listen you are the salt of the earth you are the salt you are what give taste you are the very essence of productivity you 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 not just what you bring out you your presence that's why i tell most of the people like mentor i say you are the end of the course listen before you started speaking you when you landed the course ended it was running through then he ran into you and he ran out it's met something bigger than it See, shoe get size or quicker get grade. Paul, I know Jesus, I know CC, I know who are you. There are things that run in families, they can't work where you are. You are a new creation. So it moved beyond the glory of God upon you to the fact that you have become the glory of God to the earth. So Jesus said, Listen, you are the light of the world, you are a city set on a hill. That cannot be hidden. So he was begging them, let your light so shine. This is the question. This is the answer now. That you are the beacon of hope. The one that I said in the book of Job, he said, when there's a casting down, we will say, lift them up. It's not like we are lifted up. We, we are already, we are already on the mountain. We know they come down. We are mountain dwellers. We have gone up. We are not coming down. Our job is to go about and say, where are they cast down? Where is cancer? Oh, madam, you have been here for five years. They gave you four days to die. I'll pack your bag. They say, follow me, madam. After, it's not four days they gave you. If you die today, it's not. Stand up. And then she stands up and she finds out that her legs are beginning. Ah, ah, ah. My legs are beginning to move. What's going on? Ah, my hands. Ah, a beacon of hope arrived. And then the next thing they start shouting in the hospital world. That woman is moving. What happened? What happened? Is that girl? Please come to our own world. Please come to our own world. This thing I'm telling you is not fairy tale. Amy Semple McPherson lived that life. I told you guys a story. You can go and read it. She had what we call stretcher only services. Stretcher only. Like everybody is coming for that meeting must be on a stretcher. That is about to die service. 
And the crazy thing or the interesting thing is that everybody's walking out holding their stretcher. Like Jesus would say, rise up, take up your bed and walk. We are in the days of the rise up, take up your bed and walk. I am not motivating you, be catching the fire. You people are looking at me like, a, am I a public speaker? I say, fire is falling on you. You are the one that will, uh, stand up. That vision that I saw. And I'm happy that there's already still working. I told them during fasting in January. That I saw people telling people, Madam, stand up, carry their, throw the clutches, carry the wheelchair, stone it away. And then we came back and we heard Shalom, Shalom, share that testimony. He said, The man cannot walk, he's creeper. He said, Oh, God, walk to your car, walk to the car, look at that, walk. He said, hey, Walk. What is the thing that you put in your mouth that will make somebody who is creeper believe that as this guy said, I should stand up, I can stand up? It's called the utterance of the mighty. It's not motivation, it has to be by the Spirit. And then they said the girl cannot talk, she's dumb. And then she was making a call. And then she said, Hello, are you okay? The girl that was dumb said, Fine. Like she was talking to somebody else. So, Hello, dumb girl said, Fine. End of dumbness. That is unconscious miracles. That is even the day you were prayed up. And the day you just came out like Jaga Jaga. Miracle walking child. All kinds of miracles. All kinds of miracle vessels. Dark, short, tall. Prayed up, unprayed up. <laughs> Becomes of hope. So our job is not even to look for answers. It's to send answer. He said, Saviors shall arise from Mount Zion. Saviors shall arise from Mount Zion. That means we have passed the level where we are crying. They are crying now. He said, don't say confederacy to whom this people say confederacy. And do not fear their fear. It's important that we understand times and seasons. We are in the darkness. In fact, we have entered gross darkness. And the glorious thing is that light shines brighter. It's time for sons and daughters to arise in Zion. They will ask you where to get the money. Where? Where? You tell them the Holy Ghost came upon me. The power of the Almighty overshadowed me. That's who you are. Hey, that's why you cannot take your mentorship from Twitter. Those social media things they say, it will reduce your faith to nothing. That when you hear about miracles, you'll be doubting and arguing it. We are still in the days where water turns to wine, no? Don't, don't, don't play. Don't play. Miracles are happening every day. We see it in our camp. People come here and go out another way. If you are doubting it, let your doubts be cleared today. Because we have moved from just receiving miracles to be miracle workers. I say, what will it be like if everybody here, everybody here, catch this for your enter for tacos? We will swallow up the city. We will chase out all the devils. They are demons. They call themselves territorial demons. As as how? Did they, pro- did they shed their blood? Territorial devils. Like how? Why? Like who goes you? How are you a territorial demon? You didn't buy any place. You don't even have blood to shed. Sons and daughters will arise and say, all of you, hey! You say territorial demons. You are the ones that are in Port We will make sure everybody is joining God's cause. Cause you don't to church. They will go there to do their thing. Blood of Jesus will arrive. Angels will appear. Territorial devils as how? I don't get the point. When they say the devil possess somebody, I get offended. I don't even waste time in casting out those devils. Because tell me the reason why you're possessing. Spirit husband, that you are who? That, no, tell me how much bright price you pay. You that chance. Like from where to where? How? Kind of hope. Sit down for a minute. One of my mighty women here went to do makeup for somebody and wore the person her wig and spirit husband jumped out of the person. She was not planning to do miracle though. It's that even your clothes are now carrying miracle working power. A little one is a thousand. A small one is a strong nation. There is no super apostle, super. Anybody that jump into the water will be soaked. It's river, it's water. Water not get enemy. The anointing is there for everybody. Anybody that jumps into this river, the person will be sold. See, let me tell you something. Anybody can do big things. And they tell you, anybody, any Dundee, any Mumu can do big things. Any non-entity, anybody without a background. And in case you are teaching by background, Jesus was born in a manger. You're not the first. You are not the first, my dear sister. The day you rise up, <laughs> you know how you stamp your feet on the ground. Say, enough! They were beating you. There were plenty. Demons crowding you. Plenty. Eating of your flesh. They 
after day, year after year, they will steal from your finance. They will steal from everything. They will steal your joy. They will they be eating. Then one day, all of a sudden, you die. Ah! You will see those demons that look heavy. They will become chaff. You see demons that look like dragon turn to chickens. You see devils running out like chickens. Doctor Osiris is awake. I've been sleeping. Oh yeah, all of you, march out. Step out. Having disarmed principalities and powers. He made an open show. <laughs> Everybody step out. I am march around. Show up. Move. Somebody shout I have power. Say it well, like with audacity. Don't say it like, ah, they will come for me. Let them come. Let them come. Hey, let them come. We need to do practical. We need practical. Ah, somebody needs to slap somebody this night. He said, what if I go? I see something in my house. Ah, please come, come, come. Come, come out of my house. In one. The darkness will cover the earth. Don't be afraid. Dollar will turn to one million, one thousand, five thousand. The darkness will cover. Jesus told you, you know, be like they prepared you. He said, but upon you, the Lord will arise, and His glory shall be seen. So let us understand times and seasons. The Bible said about the sons of Issachar; they understood times and seasons. So they will know what Israel ought to do. That means when you understand a time and a season, you need to, you need to know how to behave in a time and a season. It's a time to plant and a time to reap. Amen. My beauty is shaking. Can we not serve Jesus in peace? Forget it, forget it. We're good. Oh, no time at all. What's in the talk? <laughs> The sons of Issachar and they understood times and seasons and what Israel ought to do. That means there is a way to behave in the darkness. 2020 taught us a lesson during the corona era. We saw church members shaking. Like church members as you just sneeze, ah, ah, come on, come on. Like you really believe you can have corona. That is the beginning of your problem. You believe. Jesus Christ, what have you been learning in church? Who is your pastor? You believe. Like we, as you are a world of one Holy Ghost, that that's, they will sneeze. Do you understand that you are the one that will say, put it in my hand? Jesus was going about touching leprous people. What have you been learning? Yeah, you come to PGP and learn work. <laughs> what have you been learning? What have you been learning? Corona taught us a lesson. And I want to believe that between 2020 and 2024, children of God have been taught a few lessons about authority in life. We cannot start shaking again now the way we shook in 2020. What is your problem now? If you faint in a day of adversity, your strength is small. So we build up energy. We build up energy. Listen, this thing cannot swallow you. You will eat it up. Let me tell you and announce to you prophetically that this is your best season yet. This is the season where somebody is laying up gold as dust. This is the season where you are feeding the poor. You are lending to nations and you are not boring. This is the season where you are having in abundance. In abundance. It's your best season. Don't calculate it. I told them in January when we were fasting, the prophecy came. Start declaring I'm rich in every currency. We didn't even know this would happen. We started declaring I'm rich in dollars. I'm rich in pounds. I'm rich in... I'll just be declaring. Because you are fathered from above. The economy that you are in does not go down. Till Jesus come, you are good. He said, do business till I come. He said, if the son of man comes, will he find faith in the earth? We didn't find people who are still standing like we need a shake. I know who I am. See, not sang the song. I know, I know, I know who I am. Question to you Do you know who you are? Quickly, because of time. What is this darkness? This darkness that covered the earth. Number one, hopelessness. Hopelessness. That's the darkness. The first thing that happens when the devil wants to do something in a generation, he takes away our hope. So people start asking, Ah, how we go take hope? How we go take hope? The Lord shall supply all your needs. Now, so you will take hope. According to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus, not according to what is happening in your bank account. The systems of this world are shaking or shaking to their toes. But there's a prophetic money transfer. See? Ah, there's a prophetic money transfer. 
The Bible said in the book of James, it said the money that, that the rich men, that's what the Bible puts it, have packed and stored up is crying. Ha! Ah, this same Isaiah 60 said to us, he said that your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be short day nor night. Men will bring to you the forces of the Gentiles. Listen to me. Do you know what the forces of the Gentiles are? The wealth of the nations. The prophecy God gave us for the year, one of them says that authorized commanders and distributors of resources are rising. God told Abraham, I will bless you. You will be a blessing. That means what God wants to do in your life financially is beyond your needs being met. Is you going to meet the needs of others. But this darkness has entered the world and it has brought a despair, a hopelessness because people from the beginning trusted in their jobs. Now their 200k job cannot save them. He said, woe to those who make the arm of flesh their strength. For the arm of flesh will fail you. But the Lord is our strength. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we trust in the name of the Lord. That's why I told you, even when they were paying that salary, your hope is not there. So when the salary no way again, even before I was not up in it, I was already blessed before. Your hope is in Christ. Romans 5, 5 says, hope make it not ashamed. Because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. The reason why you're not going to be ashamed, because I know God loves me. Even in this, I have more than enough. There was famine in the land. The prophets that caused the famine. The prophet that was one that prophesied that there will be no rain. Nine caused the famine. He was exempted. Everybody was in the land, no food. God sent raven. Do you know who raven is? Wicked, stingy bed. Selfish bed that will rather eat his own child than to give the child food. Raven will fly from where and bring food. That means in this season, the most unlikely, unlikely places. Help is coming for you. In the most unlikely places. In the places that you least expect. I decree and I declare over you that multiple channels of help is open up to you in the name of Jesus. Sit down. Raven. Raven. That means we say this stingy man, this man that has slept with all the girls in this office, why is he taking you like his daughter? Because people don't need to like you to help you. Favor is not love. Favor is a compelling force. That means that your director that is always angry with you, you see the one that God will use to promote you. He will not even know where he will do it because there's an angel in his ear. Put a name. Put a name. It's called the force of the blood. God told Egypt, God told Israelites, I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Egyptians. Egyptians is not your boss, your slave masters. That have taken everything for slave masters. Do you know who a slave is? A slave is worthless. You are literally owned by your slave masters. And it's the person that's your slave master that carry their gold, their dollars, open their good treasure and say, take. That is not love. That is favor. It's a force that compels people. Ah, but that God is vomiting a good treasure to you. Nigeria is vomiting a good treasure to you. Every good in the land. He said the Lord our God will bless us and the earth will yield for us. If I were you, I would jump at these words because this season I need ammo. Every good in the land of Portacot and Nigeria and Africa at large is answering for you and your family in the name of Jesus. So, number one thing is hopelessness. But we have hope. He has never failed. We've never, he said, once I was young, now I'm old. I have never. <laughs> oh my, I have never. Seen the righteous forsaken, no, you see, beg for bread. So, when you wake up tomorrow morning from that, your bed, stamp your foot on the ground and begin to declare, I am helped. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. I am a well watered garden. Good things are happening to me, left, right, and center. That thing which I do shall prosper. People are paying me 10 times for the price of one. See, there are some dangerous confessions you should make. You can't hustle your way to prosperity. In a time like this, you want to die? How many hustle do you want to hustle? For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. I, I the Bible said about Joseph that the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. They didn't say Joseph did his masters and he was a prosperous man. They didn't say Joseph started a business and he was a prosperous man. You have seen it, Paris pursue. You have seen it, you have seen it, you have seen it. That the Lord being with somebody equals prosperity. 
Ah, I have become very prosperous. Very prosperous. So when you walk out this door, walk out with faith and hope. And it go full of, if the hope is excess. I know whom I believed in. No despair, no casting down. Your mom calls you, your dad calls you. It is well. It is really well. It is not just it is well as far. It is well. It, not it is well. Oh, mom, daddy, it is well. It is well. It is well with us. We have and we are bound. How ah, wealth and riches are in our house. It's our finest season. It is well. In fact, dad, write the names of those who want to dash money because we must dash money this month. We have. Expand your mind. Enlarge your mind. Pray in the Holy Ghost to help you. Loudly in tongues. Loudly in tongues. We have hope. Shakokote let the break it off. Ten more seconds, pray in the Holy Ghost and begin to shout it. I'm full of hope. I have help. I can't hear you declaring, I have help. God is helping me. I'm increasing on all sides. I have become very great. And I have become very prosperous. Oh, shut up at the Adabaha. Shouting loud, we have hope. The mighty warrior. I call you Agaba. Miracles happen when I worship you. You're more than enough for me. It's my joy to worship you. I love you so much, darling Jesus. Oh, my darling Jesus. You're a wonderful man. I love you so much, darling Jesus. Oh, my darling Jesus. You're a wonderful man. told Kenneth Copeland, he said, I have a thousand ways to give you that money. That means you should take your eyes off your parents and off your boyfriend and off your uncle and your boss. Manna can still fall from heaven. God is not limited to any channel. Hey, help is coming and I'm declaring, I'm sensing it. There are people who are in helpless situations now. I stand as your beacon of hope and I declare over you, help! has come upon you like a crown upon your head help 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 you go and you come back with treasure you go and you come back with plenty help has come god would do it again oh just let's have a basket here and again and again he's the same god today as he always has been Yesterday and today and forever the same. There's no reason to doubt. God will do it again. Never failed me yet. Never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. There is one thing. No. Wherever, wherever I go, Jesus Christ never failed me. Sit down. So, when this darkness comes, the first thing that you see is that people start losing hearts. People start saying, Now that all is 2000, how? But we know the how. God said, I will never, never leave you nor forsake you. Hey, the Lord my God is with me like a mighty, terrible one. Abraham saw God as Jireh. Abraham called the mountain Jehovah Jireh. There is a ram with his horn cutting the ticket for you. God is going to be opening your eyes in this season to see the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches that are in secret places. The Bible said God opened the eyes of the woman and she saw a well of water. So the well of water has been there all the while, but she could not see. So what will God do for you in the darkness? Open your eyes, you can see in the dark. 
others will cross the river they will not see it but once you step by god to say stop you will hear a voice behind you saying this is the way this is how you prosper start selling slippers start selling food this is how you prosper and in the middle of it kings are coming kings are coming to the brightness of your rising announcements angels angelic media spreading your vibes all around it's not by selling food it's who is announcing you no it's not social media ads that make us great it's one thing for people to see your ads and another for people to love you it is God that opens the heart of people to a man open hearts are a gift you cannot force anybody to like you how about God is giving people holy emotions he said the heart of a king is in my hand I like rivers of water not just the heart of anybody kings kings higher no wonder Esther stood before the king every other girl with their fine shape and she was fine as well so when all of us are fine all of us are virgins all of us have qualification what will make you stand out and Esther found favor in the sight of the king we have hope we are expired this is our best season yet it's time for light to shine now that they don't know what to do introduce your Jesus Jesus the way the truth and the life Hey, our light has shine. Your light has come. Oh. I see light on people's head. Your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Oh. I say it's your finest season. Let nobody deceive you. His glory is risen upon you. Let me see if I can run this down and release the fire. Number two thing that's in this darkness is sicknesses and diseases. While people are crying that they don't have hope, the devil will just land one expensive sickness. You know those ones that they will say liver, kidney, all those kind of things that you don't know where to start from. The money that they don't have, they're spending it. That is why beacons of hope are rising. For this purpose was the Son of Man sent that he would destroy all the works of the devil. One of the things Satan is in these last days is sicknesses, oh, affliction. Old people disease, 20 years old now have it. How can a 15 year old boy have kidney failure? How? From where to where? Why? What has he eaten? What? I think they say you have to eat this, eat that. The way thing don't eat. It is the wickedness of the wicked. Ah, but we crush it under. Hey, you're not listening. Look at 90. Say, behold, I give you power. You don't understand. They have given you power. It's just that you're not using it. He said, behold, I give unto you power. What will you tread upon serpents, scorpions, <laughs> and over all the powers of the enemy? And nothing shall by any means hurt you. The first field of God's protection surround us. We are a fortified city. Put your hand on your head and say, No sickness here. No affliction here. No disease. Touch your organs. Tell them, No way. Don't admit any sickness. We say, No. We are not doing. I'm not doing. It's not by force. I don't want. I'm not want. I don't want. Nigeria, in 2024, they said our, our slogan is No green. I'm not doing. You're not doing fire bread. I don't want. You can't, you can't put it on me. I'm not doing. There are no lumps here. We don't do lumps. You cannot. You cannot. They're not born. You can't put it. We don't do arthritis around here. We don't do blood diseases. We don't do it. I'm not there too. Just very many say no. Then they touch your father. You say, guy, get out. All of you. Where, where anywhere demons are. All of you. Anywhere. 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 Get out. For every tree that my father has not planted, would sit down. See, yeah, tonight eh, you are a soldier. Soldier, soldier, gun, gun, gun. Hey, hey, hey. Terrorist. It's time to terrorize the devil. You have something now. It's called the blood of Jesus. A drop is enough. And the number three thing that is in this darkness sufferings and frustrations. The darkness. Number one, hopelessness. Number two, sicknesses, diseases. Number three, suffering. People are suffering. And if you don't guard your heart, you will say, hey, yeah, it can be anybody. It cannot. It cannot. It cannot. It cannot. The Bible says, guard your heart. So it says, people are suffering. Hey, yeah. You don't know where you now put yourself. No, no. We are the ones. Do you understand? Oh, Jesus. Uh -huh. You are helper. You are not victim. Let us define this thing very well. It's like when you go to a funeral, a pastor will say, eh, this person has died. Eh, watch your ways. Oh. Life is nothing. Life is something. Oh. 
Oh, my own life. Psalm 91 says, With long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. I feel hot about this, but I will not put myself inside that place. No, 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 no. Bam, 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 bam. The Bible said about Moses, he was 120 years old. His natural strength was not abated. His eyes were not dim. Moses climbed the mountain to go and die. Do you understand? Like God said, Moses is done. It's time to call you home. He climbed the mountain. The mountain. That's killer lay down and say, okay, okay, bye bye. <laughs> oh God. Kenneth Hagin died. His heart was still beating. They called Kenneth Copeland to lay hand and say, guy, oh yeah, now okay. Because this eternal life that he has been speaking, this away that will be declaring every day, I cannot die. I will not die by accident. I will not die by gunshots. I will not die by poison. I will not, I will not die. When you listen to Kenneth Hagin, the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever whether man or woman will come up to the king yeah sister who is not called there is what one law of his to put him to death except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may leave but I have not been called to come in to the king these 13 days. Put 13 and 14. Verse 13. See the answer. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. Think not with thyself oh, that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall there enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou had come to the kingdom for such a time as this that is not shining is that one light there was darkness Mordecai has sent message to Esther say Esther there's fire on the mountain Esther they want to kill all the Jews and Esther gave legitimate reasons everything she said was legit I don't have capital my leg is burning me I'm, I'm squatting. In fact, I'm very sick. Esther said, the king has said that anybody that there's a law, if you, if you appear before him without being called, you are put to death. It doesn't matter who you are. And they've not called me. You would think Mordecai would say, ah, not true. Kai, 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 what do we do? Mordecai summarized all that as rubbish excuse. That means when it's time to arise, there's no reason why. The only limitation you have is the voice of God. There's no law that is law enough. Like Esther was talking as if there's nothing called fasting and prayer. Like you they talk like say they know they break bread. You're talking like there's no communion, there's no seed to sow. You talk about your excuses like there's something when you stand them, face them with the blood of Jesus, like they can stand a chance. It's legit. That's what most people when you tell them, why are you not doing what you're doing? I don't have capital. It's rubbish. The people I mentor, they know when they when I speak to me and I tell them that this you are saying is no reason. It sounds like I'm harsh because I know. Guy, there's no reason, reason enough for me not to shine my light. No, no reason. 2022, I lost my dad. The day he was, he left, they called me. Now, the next day was build up night. There's legit reason. There's legit reason. You are the other. That is, that is work. That is, in fact, trauma. Oh my God, are we crying? Or are we, like, what are we doing? And they say, we need to come to the village now. Bring him, buddy. Right. But if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. And if you act like you don't have covenant, you are not well taught. If there's nothing else standing for you, let the blood of Jesus and the mercy of God. See, if you don't have anything else to cry, cry mercy. If your strength has finished, Lord, in this situation, have mercy. But that we will fall. That. <laughs> See, the material they used to form us is unfoldable. We have so way. You don't get. <laughs> one minute we are here, the next minute we are there. And I just made a few. I just told one two people. I said, "Don't tell anybody. We're doing this. Arrange this. That sending." I was carrying cops from other courts to the village. Midnight, one a.m. It was raining. Thunder was striking. I was with the cops going to the village. I spoke in tongues from here to that place. It was like a six-hour drive because of the whole road and everything. My tongues were up. Likato skidabaha. 
landed there, we saw devils, we saw all kinds of human beings, we saw witch, we saw ayah. But as we enter the place, <laughs> there is something God has put inside of you. You are not fed that weight. You get power. While I was in that beside that ambulance with the cops, I was organizing online meetings. You can say amen. 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 There was a dead body by my side. See, when we came into Christ, we died. We have died with Christ. The life that I live is not I that live. <laughs> Christ that lives in me. When God said you can do all things, he meant it. When we tell you that the engine on your inside is of a very heavy capacity, it's not joke. When you come here, we are preaching. Be listening. It's not motivational speaking. It is spirit and life. I remember that night, Pike was teaching. Pique, I said, teach. We're good. We're fine. How far? It is well. How are you, ma? We are fine. How are you fine? Because the Bible said, even in this temptation, God will find a way of escape. See, he said, when you go through the fire, it will not burn you. And when you pass through the waters, they will not overflow you. There is provision for every temptation, guy. You, you will march on the head of the serpent. We went there. I was there. I was organizing build up night. The build up night, I wasn't there, but it was one of the most powerful build up nights ever. Came back, continued ministry with grace and favor, not angry at God. Not asking, oh God, God, see, listen, God is good. I told you guys, oh, landlord is carrying my mattress and throwing it out. Yeah, God is good, oh. Throw it inside, God. You know, go reach how many months you come to my estate and come see. That is why our faith in God is not per temptation, per testimony. We have believed God. We cannot unbelieve. When He does it, before He does it, after He does it, and if He says He's not doing it now too, we have believed God. That is what makes you tough. Eh, see, people think this one loses, this one reduces you, increases you, because the devil has nothing on you again. We're not one of those saying, ah, God, I will backslide if you don't. Don't now. We have loved you. We have loved you the way you have loved us. Ah, God, give me a husband or, or what? Or what? You will bring down the great white throne. What will you do? We have believed God. We cannot believe God. So Esther said, ah, ah, I cannot. They said, Mordecai said, guy. I mean, in Mordecai's mind, it was like, even if you die, a henko. Eh, and so? You must cross the line now. You must cross that line. You want to change the you want to change the world you must cross the line it's called heart of a lion <laughs> you go cross cross well shadrach meshach abadnego they cross the line they say we know our god he will save us but in case he said today he's not in the business of saving nebuchadnezzar they never call him all king they didn't say senior nebuchadnezzar they say oh nebuchadnezzar we will not bow we are believed put us in fire put us that means they did not enter hoping to be rescued. They were just, it's a state of being. So when you stand up, you say, I'm changing this world. Don't say there's no capital. Move, wait me that. Don't leave me. Your mind, see, be indoctrinated with these truths. And then you said, Esther, maybe you were born for such a time as this. Stop playing. When Esther heard those words, she said, Guy, call all my maidens. Three days and three nights. We enter now, you wear priesthood regalia. Because you were talking like a man before. Now you start speaking like a god. Where are your regalia? And enter those three days of travel. Let everything you are putting me come out. I won't end like this. This is not where my life will end. There's a glory ahead of me. There's favor ahead of me. There are nations ahead of me. I'm not limited by education. There's a place you are taking me to. Holy Ghost. You and I will change the world. Let the rivers inside of me come out. Lock your doors. Shut down social media. Another three days and three nights. Esther wore royal regalia. It's called the robe of righteousness. And then she has crossed the line. We heard that for the first time. Say, if I perish, I perish. That thing she used to be afraid of before. That she said, I cannot go. They might kill me. Now she's ready to die. If I hey, I cannot. Now suit <laughs> The interesting thing is that the moment you say, if I perish, you will not perish. That is the interesting thing. Those who have crossed the line, they have passed from death to life. 
rise up to your feet time has gone open your mouth hold your neighbor hand and start praying in the holy ghost you have looked at me enough close your eyes now and start praying done something we're closing this meeting 8 p.m when i give you prayer don't think you will pray forever it's one minute enter that esther mode the prayer is simple bring out what is inside and put it on top bring out the grace put it on top bring out the visibility put it on top bring out the fire put it on top you're holding your neighbors and for support but if they're not helping you lift your hand open your mouth one minute pray in the holy ghost to the city. 